Welcome to The Leather Journey. Tonight we're going to talk about floggers and some of you know I've been in the lifestyle about 23 years and it's been quite a journey and tonight we're going to look at my journey with floggers. So let's look at the first flogger that probably 90% of the people buy when they're just brand new to the lifestyle and they decide they want to go out and buy a leather flogger. They're going to buy a flogger that looks very similar to this. Black's a very common color. And the most common material for a beginning flogger or someone that's beginning with floggers is a suede flogger. Suede has had the top grain skimmed off of it so both sides of the fall are suede. And I think the reason why most beginners kind of start with suede is they're inex pretty inexpensive floggers when you move over into full grain leathers you're going to pay a little bit more so tonight we're just going to look at some of these different leathers and some of these floggers and i kind of laid them out from softest to heaviest and we'll talk about the different leathers real quickly and i'll give you a close-up and i have absolutely no idea how long this video is going to be but this particular white flogger uh, is doe skin and doe uh, is the female of the deer species. And the skin, the hide is a little bit softer and lighter than its male counterpart, which goes by deer skin. But a deer skin flogger for someone that's just starting out is probably the first leather and first flogger that is recommended because it's soft. It's a lightweight, lighter weight flogger, so as you're learning, uh, there's less chance of hurting somebody while you're along your journey and you're learning how that flogger is gonna work, okay? Personally, I liked all my tails to be black. I do have a few other colors, but generally speaking, in my collection, my tails are gonna be black and the handle might be plaited out of uh, different colors of leather. When you look at leather, there's different tanning processes, and we'll talk about that as we move through some of these leathers. But as a general rule of thumb, if you look at leather and it's a color, it's been chrome tanned. If you look at it and it's brown or black, it's been veg tanned, more than likely, uh, or sometimes oil tanned. And oil tanning, oftentimes if it's cowhide, oil tanning is going to be called latigo. Uh, so this particular brown is elk. So elk is a little heavier than deer skin, and it kind of has a buttery soft feel. Uh, so deer's the lightest. Elk would be a little heavier. When you move up the grades of heaviness, then the next skin would be moose. Um, moose is heavy, soft, thuddy, whereas deer skin by comparison would be lighter and, uh, and not quite as thuddy as moose. So the next hide we're looking at is cowhide, but it's top grain cowhide. So one side of the tail is going to have a top grain and the underside is going to have suede. So with cowhide, this has been veg tanned. If I take that same cowhide and I oil tan it, I could call it latigo. And oil tanned hide is gonna be much stingier even though the leather is roughly the same weight. Uh, it's gonna be stingier. This particular cowhide has a one inch tail, so it's kind of more of like a strap style flogger. Uh, but it's veg tan, not oil tan. So even though it's a strap, it's not going to be as stingy as that Latigo flogger was. So the heaviest cowhide is bullhide. And uh, you'll not only see bullhide made into shoes and boots, but you'll see bullhide made into a flogger. So that's probably about the heaviest weight that you can find cowhide in as bullhide. 
if you were able to find bull hide that had been oil tanned, then that would be by far the heaviest, stingiest uh, leather in the, in the cowhide category. So a, ki a kissing cousin to cowhide would be bison. So bison's gonna be heavy and thuddy. And a lot of the way, one of the variables with the impact in a flogger is the way the tip's finished. This is finished with a round tip. If I finished it with a square tip or a slanted tip, then that would automatically make that flogger stingier regardless of the type of leather that it was made out of. So this flogger is made out of lamb skin. Lambs often used in garment making to make skirts and coats and clothes. So you can imagine a flogger made out of lambskin is very soft, very light. So it can be used in sensitive areas like the breasts or chest or genitals. Um, this is another example of lambskin, only this is a, a mop. It has many, many tails. I would say over 200 tails in a mop, very soft, very thuddy, almost like getting a massage. Now we have here two kind of unique floggers. This one is made out of kangaroo lacing and it's finished with a slant tip. So it's gonna be very stingy, very, very stingy, okay? Uh, and it's just done in red and black. Uh, and even though the lacing, um, actually the, the skinniness of the tails adds to uh, the stinginess of the lacing. The same animal, kangaroo, different style of tanning process and uh, manufacturing process. This is kangaroo suede and it's the thinnest leather in the world. Okay, it's almost paper thin. So if you can imagine a kangaroo suede flogger that has over 200 tails and that leather is paper thin, how that must feel when that comes across your skin. It's definitely a day at the spa, but a very unique flogger. Uh, I, I don't currently know a source anywhere in the world for kangaroo suede. Um, so these three floggers, we're moving down the chain of animals that can provide us with a quality flogger. This is goat skin. And this is a matched set uh, for Florentine to learn two-handed flogging. Uh, goat's light, uh, very kind of almost a, a sensual feeling flogger and skin. But that same animal, if it's oil tanned, it, the oil tanning process is going to add weight to the tails and it's going to make those tails stingy uh, and you're not going to probably even recognize that it's goat when you're feeling it on your skin if i threw this goat skin flogger and this goat skin flogger the oil tan one's going to feel almost like bee stings when it hits your skin compared to the very soft goat skin so i've got three uh Super mops or mops that are specialty floggers. We'll look at those real quickly. Uh, this is horse hair. Horse hair does come in different colors. This was what I would call Palomino, and it's a nice long tail. Uh, horse hair can cause micro abrasions when it's thrown on the skin, uh, and you can create a wide variety of sensations when you're flogging with horse hair, depending upon the technique and the intensity and how hard you're swinging it. Now we visited, we've already covered this leather. This is elk, but it's an elk super mop. I say super mop because it, the tails are 26 inches long and each tail is three quarter inches wide. 
where your, your normal traditional flogger has a half inch wide tail. This super mop has a three quarter inch wide tail and the tail's 26 inches long. And I haven't weighed this flogger, but it's pretty heavy. I did show you its balance point. It's a well-balanced flogger, so you can throw it, but it's almost a full body experience to throw a flogger that's that heavy and that well balanced. Elk tends to be to be uh, thuddy and buttery feeling. This specialty flogger is alpaca, and I think the tails are about maybe two inches wide, uh, 26 inches long. So if the if the furry side is hitting you, that's very soft and sensual. Uh, if the tail flips over and you actually get hit with the suede side, that can actually take a bite. So you'd be surprised at how stingy this flogger can be when it's thrown. Um, so that kind of covers the gamut of leathers and materials that are used in traditional floggers. Most of these are, are leathers or hides. The only one that's not a leather or a hide is the horse hair. But I will say, if I took Moodstone or any bottom and blindfolded them uh, and used each flogger on their back, uh, most bottoms would not be able to tell the difference between doe skin and deer skin, would not be able to tell the difference between uh, bull hide and bison. Uh, they would not be able to tell the difference between lamb skin and goat skin. So once all is said and done, 23 years of flogging, uh, flogger collections here, and my advice to someone who's beginning their journey and starting out would be to find a lightweight flogger that you like. I'll give you deer skin as an example. Find a medium weight flogger that's thuddier that will serve your purposes. I would lean toward moose and find a heavier weight flogger that's going to be a little bit stingier or have a little bite. And in that instance, I would go to latigo or cowhide. Uh, the rest of these floggers are all fabulous and they're all great, but when you're playing in a dim lit dungeon and the person you're playing with is blindfolded, they won't be able to tell and appreciate the leather you're throwing. Uh, they will be able to tell the difference between a lightweight, a medium weight, and a heavyweight flogger. And so that would be my recommendation to you as you start your journey, is to fill those three first. Then if you get interested, in all of these different kinds of leathers and you want to collect floggers and, uh, and kind of engross yourself in this aspect of leather, leather, by all means do that because I'm an example of someone that did that and I don't regret it in the least. As always, thanks for watching The Leather Journey.